so in the previous class, we learned about the heat equation, right? So heat equation is an equation of the type you have ut. <coughs> U is a function of uh, x and z, which is time and space. So the derivative in time of u is equal to the derivative in um, in the second derivative in space of the u and x is given in an interval a, b, and t is given from zero to infinity, right? Um, so what we did <coughs> is to uh, solve this equation. So this equation, you're going to have an initial condition, right? So this is going to be um, as u0. And then you also have the boundary condition. <coughs> you have the t at a. Um, so you, you have um, um, c1 plus c2. Um, dx of u t a is going to be zero, and then c two u t b plus c uh, c three c four dx of u t b is equal to zero. Right. So this is the heat equation that we learned in the previous uh, class. The heat equation is a partial differential equation because it involves um, partial derivative derivative in time and in space. Right. So in the heat equation, you have the first derivative in time of u is going to be equal to the second derivative in space of u. You have two initial, uh, an initial condition at time zero, uh, which is u zero x, and then um, uh, you have boundary condition at a and b, like in the in a in a standard boundary uh, value problem, right? So what we uh, what we uh, have to do um, in this uh, equation is you're going to expand in x. So, so methodology. So you expand in x. Right, so the, the method <coughs> of this equation is, um, is to expand in x. All right? Right? So the method that you, uh, you solve this equation is that you expand in x. Um, <coughs> in order to expand in x, we need a basis, right? So you need a basis. <coughs> so in order to do that, what you do is to solve the eigenvalue problem, right? that you have to solve um, the eigenvalue problem <coughs> phi n is equal to lambda n phi n and then um, with the same boundary condition right so c1 of uh, so uh, phi, uh, c1 phi of t uh, of a plus c2 vx so this is second. P prime at A is equal to zero and C three P at B plus C four P prime at B is zero and then you solve it in A B. Right? So the points uh, the method here is that you solve um, the the stem Lewin eigenvalue problem in X. Um, so when you solve the sum the mean eigenvalue in x, you're gonna find an orthogonal basis, right? Pn is an orthogonal basis. Uh, basis in the sense that, um, so you have Pn, Pm is going to be zero, which means that integral from A to B of Pn x, Pm x, dx is going to be zero. Right? I explain again, in the heat equation, you have two variables, x and t. But you only need the basis for x and not for t. So what you do is that you're going to construct a basis for x. Um, the way you construct a basis for x is that 
you have to solve the storm Lewin eigen value problem on AB with the same boundary condition, right? So the boundary condition is the same. And then when you solve this problem, um, this is a standard process, right? So when you solve this problem, you found you can find a, 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 an orthogonal, orthogonal basis. So Pn is an orthogonal basis in the sense that Pn and Pm are orthogonal, which means that the interval from A to B of Pn times Pm are zero, right? So when you solve this, um, we we expand. Um, U on the basis, right? So you expand U, um, Tx is the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of A and T, Pmx, and two, uh, two, uh, we need to solve. Uh, we need to solve for A n to find u, right? So in order to solve for u, what you need to do is to find all of the coefficient an. An now depends on t. Questions? It's good. So now you know that this is a basis, right? So, <coughs> so then uh, what you do is that, okay, so the time the real t of u, tx, will be the sum when n is going from one to infinity of an prime t, Pnx, right? <coughs> uh, and then um, the second derivative in x of u, Px, <coughs> will be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n, Pn second of x, right? Now, so the first step in solving this problem is that you have to solve the eigenvalue problem to find the basis, right? Yes? Inside the back step of this. So, so you have to expand the solution on this basis to find all of the coefficient an. Now, the, the, the task now is to find this coefficient an. In order to find an, I have to take the derivative in time of u, which is an prime pn, and the derivative in x of u, which is an t pn second, right? So now, uh, what is the next step? that we discussed in the previous class. Yes? Yes, before that. You have to find out lambda. Yes? Yes, the double prime back paper. So this, right, so you're gonna use this <coughs> relation. So you like this, <coughs> um, an, T, lambda n, uh, Pn, x, right? So you use the fact that Pn is an eigen function, which means that Pn second is going to give you lambda n, Pn, right? Now since, since um, utx is equal to dxx, utx, the coefficient Uh, of Pn in dt of u and the x x of u have to be equal, right? Uh, so you have a n prime t is equal to lambda n a n t, right? <coughs> I explain again. To solve a heat equation, what you do is the following. You ignore about the time variable. You solve for basis for x. In order to find a basis for x, you have to solve the eigenvalue problem. Pn second is <coughs> Pn, right? <coughs> After you solve this equation, um, um, you find a basis which is orthogonal. And now we want to find u. So you expand u on this basis, and you you have to solve for n. So you have to find n. Now, how do you find an? You take the derivative in time of u, you get a n prime p n. Take the derivative in x of u, you get a n p n second. But a p n second is lambda n p n. 
So 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 basically, um, a n p n second will be a n lambda n p n, right? Now because d t of u is equal to the s x of u, the coefficient of the p n p n and the p n here has to be equal, which means that a n prime is lambda n a n, right? And now now lambda s is given, right? So lambda n is is already computed. Right? Lambda n is the eigenvalue that we computed in the, in the previous step. So what is the solution of an prime is equal to lambda n an, yes? Is it C e to the lambda t? Yes, can you sign my paper please? So basically this is a first order differential equation. So the solution should be an t is c times e to the lambda n t. So what can you say about this c? Yes? Yes? Yes, can you say it by the paper, please? So in this case, if you replace zero here, right? A n is zero, it will be C e to the lambda n times zero, which is C, right? So A n, T will be A n is zero, e to the lambda n T, right? So to find A n, what you have to do now is to find A n zero, all right? Um, I, I explain again. This is a partial differential equation because you have derivative in time, partial derivative in time, and partial derivative in space. Um, so what you do is you ignore the time variable first and then you construct a basis for the x variable. In order to construct an, a, a, a basis for the x variable, what you do is you solve this a n value problem um, um, and then you find lambda n and phi n, right? So after you find lambda n and pn, pn is a basis, so you expand u on this basis and you have to find a n t. So to find a n t, what you do is, is that you use the equation, right? So you have dt of u is a n prime pn, the x x of u is a n pn second of x, but pn second is lambda n pn, so, so you can write a n pn second as a n lambda n pn, right? But this is equal to this one, which means that the coefficient of of, of phi n here, and the coefficient of phi n here, they have to be equal, which means that a n prime is lambda n a n t. Lambda n, n is the eigen uh, value, so this is computed already in, in, in this step. So a n t will be c is lambda n t. This is the first order differential equation. We, we know how to solve it. If you replace zero here, a n zero will be c, because e lambda uh, n zero is, is one, so a n will be a n zero, e n lambda n t. Questions? Right? Um, so now we have to, to solve for an, right? We have lambda n. Now we have to compute an zero. How do we compute an zero? Yes? Well, we know that uh, an of t is equal to c equals or C, E, lambda, N, T, but it's also equal to, uh, I'm sorry, I can't think right now, but let's say, uh, brain's not working. So. Yes? Do we not use the original idea of orthogonality and find it in the product? Yes, can you stand back type of this? Uh, so now you have what? You have um, U, N, U, N is zero, X will be the sum when N is going from one to infinity, of a n zero lambda n uh, n is zero p n x right now what you have to do is to find a n zero but you know that u n is zero is n the sum when n is going from one to infinity t of a n zero p n x right but this is also u zero. So, so, so now you have what you have uh, u zero is u x zero x, and this is the sum when n is going from one to infinity of a n zero p n x. So, what is the formula for a n zero? 
uh, u zero or u naught times or the inner product of u naught uh, dn over inner product of dn v n. Yes, can you say the back back of this? So because of orthogonality, orthogonality a n is zero will be inner product of u x zero with v n dividing by v n v n. All right. What just? So now let us try to do another example which is a little bit more complicated. So any questions on this scheme? Uh, so let us do a, another example in which we have something more. Uh, more. So, so in this heat equation, the difficulty now is this number two. All right, so let us try to use this scheme to solve this equation in the case that I have a number two. to do is to find a basis, right? Right. Uh, I explain again. So in this case, I have to solve this heat equation. This heat equation is different from the previous one uh, because here I have a number two, right? So ut, uh, dt of u is going to be two times uxx, but the method will be the same, right? So I consider the equation on zero to one. So the first thing that I have to do is to find a basis, right? So, um, so eigenvalue problem. <coughs> so I have to solve the uh, t second to find lambda and phi, right? So it's lambda phi, and then so what is the uh, boundary condition that I need to put into this? Um, Eigenvalue problem. Yes? X is from 0 to 1. Yes, yes. The X is from and 0 to 1. B, B of 0 is 0, B prime of 0, or B prime of 1. Yes, can I back to break this? Right, so the first thing that I have to do is to find a basis. So I have phi at 0, 0, and phi prime at 1 is 1. So what did I do? I just I just I just translate this. I would just throw away the t, and I put it here. And here I also throw away the t, and I put it here, right? To find a boundary condition is easy, um, because we ignore the t. So in order to find a boundary condition, I have to throw away the t here, and I have to throw away the t here. So the eigenvalue problem will be lambda phi. You have to find both lambda and phi, such that t second is equal to lambda phi on 0 and 1, and phi at 0 is 0, and phi prime at 1 is 1. Yes? Uh, why is phi prime at 1, 1, shouldn't be 0? Uh, thank you. Can you sign it back? Zero. Yes. Can you sign it back? Um, right? So, how can I solve this again value problem? Yes? So, okay, if you have 
solve for lambda by setting up the different cases for lambda being greater than or equal to or less than zero. Yes, you can sign the back of this. So you have to consider characteristic equations, right? R square is going to be lambda. And case number one, lambda is positive. So what happens when lambda is positive? So we have two roots, right? So the first one will be square root of lambda, and the second one will be minus square root of lambda. And this gives me Px to be c1 e to the square root of lambda x plus c2 e to our minus square root of lambda x. All right? That's good. What is the next step? Yes? Yes. Can you say a bike factor, please? Uh, P0 will be 0, which means that C1 e to the 0 plus C2 e to the 0 is 0, which means that C2 minus C1. So in this case, you have Px is C1 e <coughs> square root of lambda x minus C1 e to the power minus square root of lambda x. Right? What is the next step? Can you sign the back of this? So now you use the second boundary condition, right? So P1 is 0, which means that C1 is square root of lambda minus C1 minus square root of lambda is 0, which means that C1 is again 0. So this case is yes. Can you sign the back of this? Yes, I make a mistake. So I have to take the root of this. Um, so, so then P1 prime of x will be. C1 square root of lambda is square root of lambda x plus square root of lambda C1 is square minus square root of lambda x. Right? So P prime at 1 will be C1 square root of lambda is square root of lambda or square root of lambda is um, C1 is minus square root of lambda 0. So C1 is 0. So in this case, we don't have anything. Right? So this is the standard process. Um, to, f to solve the eigenvalue problem, it's, it's always the same. So the, the, the difference between different equations is how, to, how you use those eigen uh, functions as, um, as, as the basis case number two, lambda is zero. So what happens when lambda is zero? P second is zero, which means that Px is Ax plus B, right? <coughs> so now you have to put P zero to zero, which means that A times zero plus B is zero, so B is um, zero. So Px is going to be Ax. What is the next step? Yes, can you sign the back paper, please? So we're going to use the second value condition, right? In this case, P prime of x will be a. So P prime at 1 will be 0, and this is equal to a. So P in this case is 0. So again, for this case, we don't have anything, right? It's clear. Um, so x right again. So, so you can think of a heat equation is an equation in which you have an extra parameter t. What you do is the same with the previous step, except that, uh, so you want to solve for the eigenvalue on x. For the eigenvalue on x, what you do is you consider a characteristic equation, and you consider three cases. First case doesn't give you anything. The second case also doesn't give you anything. So now let us consider case number three. Uh, lambda is negative. So what happens when lambda is negative? So in this case, you have two roots, 
and square root of absolute value of lambda. So Px will be C1 cos sinus of square root of lambda x plus C2 sinus of square root of lambda x. Right? Uh, case num uh, so I explain again. For case number three, lambda is negative, you have two roots that uh, plus and minus uh, square root of lambda. So in this case, you have sinus and cosinus. So, so what is the next step? Yes? Yes. Can you say my back like this? So now you're going to use the first boundary condition, P0 is 0, which means that C1 cosinus of 0 plus C2 sinus of 0 is 0, which means that C1 is 0. So in this case, 3x will be only the sinus square root lambda x. Right? It's good. So what is the next step? Yes? <coughs> yes, can you say the back part of this? So now you want to take the derivative, right? So p power of x will be uh, c2 square root of lambda cosinus of square root of lambda x. And then you're going to plug in the second value condition, p power of 1 is 0, which means that in this case you have c1 square root of lambda uh, cosinus of square root of lambda is 0. Right? So if cosinus of lambda is 0, uh, what is the value for square root of lambda? Yes? So in this case, cosine of square root of lambda is zero, which means the square root of lambda is n pi um, plus pi over two. Right? So lambda will be minus n pi plus pi over two squared. Right? So this is lambda n and phi n will be uh, sinus of uh, n pi plus pi over two. So this is the eigenfunction and the uh, eigenvalue, right? Right, now, so after all of this computation, what we found is the eigenvalue and the eigenfunction, right? So here, I can conclude that uh, 3nx will be sinus of n plus 1 half pi x. And then lambda n will be minus n plus one half uh, pi squared, right? So this is the eigen function, and this is the eigen value, right? So the process that you find the eigen value and the eigen function is is standard. Now you have the basis, right? So what is the next step now? Yes? We have to expand the uh, along the basis of and then we have to take into account the theory this time. Not yet, not yet. So you have to you, you, you write out the basis first. Can you sign my paper, please? So now you wanna um, project on the basis. You on the basis. Right, so u will be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n t um, phi n plus x, right, which is the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n t <coughs> sine of n plus 1 half pi x, right? So now you're going to write u in terms of this basis. So u t x will be the, um, the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n t sin s of n plus one half pi x, right? So, so the goal is to 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 go back to this equation. How do I go back to that equation? Yes. Can we plug in our initial condition? Not yet. Not yet. I want to 
use this degree. Yes? Yes, and send back the frequencies. So the first thing that I have to do is I take the partial derivative in t, right? So what is the derivative of this of this function? Yes? Uh, and time t, yeah, t zero. Yes, and send back frequencies. So the the derivative in time of this function is um, an prime t of sinus of n plus one half pi x, right? Now, what is the next uh, partial derivative? Yes. Yes. And you said back to paper, please. So now I have to take the x x of u t x. What is it? <coughs> I have to take the partial derivative in x of this series. Yes? <coughs> yes, can you send back paper, please? So, so this, I'm gonna take a sum of n and I take the second derivative of this guy. Right? <coughs> I have to take this, right? So I have a sum. And I have to take the derivative in x, the second derivative in x. So n is, 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 is not there because, because you don't have x. So take the second derivative of this guy. Right? So what is the second derivative of this guy? Yes? Inside the back paper, please. So this is going to be long, uh, so when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n minus n plus 1 half prime square sinus of n plus 1 half pi x, right? So even you don't you don't need to use this eigenvalue problem. You can see it right away from here, right? Because because First, you take a first derivative of n plus one half pi x prime, right? So what is this derivative? What is the first derivative of sinus n plus one half pi x? Yes. Uh, cosine n plus one half pi x times n plus one half pi. Can you say by the of this? So this is n plus one half pi cosinus of um, n plus one half pi x, right? So sinus of n plus <coughs> one half pi x second degree one. Yeah. <coughs> what is the second derivative of this guy? N plus one half pi squared. Yes, I have a back paper, please. So, I square sinus of n plus one half pi x, right? Right. So basically, this is p n second is equal to lambda n, and this is p n, right? So, so here, this is the process that we have here. You have to take the second derivative, and when you take the second derivative, you have a factor <coughs> times the function itself. But just Right, so so this is this can be seen easily. So you take the first derivative, you get one factor of n cosinus. You you get a, you take the second derivative, you have another factor with a minus and then a sinus. Basically, this is p n second is lambda n p n because p n is sinus n plus one half pi x, right? So here I have sinus n plus one half pi x second. This gives me minus n plus one half. Uh, pi square sinus n plus one half pi, right? I want to use this equation, right? What should I do? Yes. Uh, you, you'll just have your two partial derivatives there, but the dxx is going to be multiplied by two. Right. Can you send a back paper, please? So I'm going to multiply this by 2. This is going to be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity t of a n 
minus n plus one half pi square sinus of n plus one half pi x. So now I know that dt of u is two times dx x of u. This is the equation, right? What can I say? So, so you want to have the same thing, right? So this guy, which is the coefficient of this quantity and this quantity, so so the so you have the two functions here equal. So which means that this this box has to be equal to this box, right? So I have a n prime is a n times two uh, n plus one half prime square. Here I have a minus. Right? Right? So, here I have two times the uh, uxx, and here I have dt of u. So, dt of u is two times the xx of u, uh, right? Which means that the coefficient. Be, because here the, the, the circle of things are equal, so you have to have that the box here is equal to the box here, which means that an prime is minus 2n plus 1 half pi square an. Right? So this is a first order differential equation. What is the solution of this equation? <coughs> this is the first order differential equation, right? So what is the Formula for solution of yes. An of t is equal to an of zero e to the negative two times n. Can, can you sign my paper, please? So basically, this is the first order differential equation, um, and the solution is explicit. So you have this n plus one half prime square. So this is the first order differential equation, and then the solution is exponential, right? So the solution is ant is an zero times exponential minus two times n plus one half pi square t. Um, so I'm gonna plug everything back into the u. So u will be n is going to be one from infinity. From infinity, I'm gonna plug this for the value of t. So ant. So this is um, n plus one half pi square t times sinus of n plus one half pi x. Right, so this is the formula for the solution. Right. So basically when you have the number two or not, it doesn't change anything. If it is here one, um, I have to replace here to be one and here there is no number two. Right? So what happens if I replace here to be three? Yes? And the coefficient of the means is turn to three. Right, right. Can you sign the back of paper of this? So here if I replace this by three, so then this is replaced by three, and then here this is replaced by three. Right? Questions? Now, what is the next step? Yes? Yes, can you sign back um, So the AN0 is not computed, right? So what you do is you have to compute it <coughs> 0. So what you do is you replace T to be 0. So um, U0X will be the sum when AN is going from 1 to infinity of AN0. Sinus of N plus 1 half pi X. Right? But U0 is 1. Right, so this is one here. So how can I compute a zero? A and zero. Right? 
So I have this formula. I want to compute an zero. I replace t to be zero. So u zero x will be this guy because this term is one. Uh, but u zero x is one, right? So now I have one is equal to the sum when n is going from one to infinity t of a n zero sinus n plus one half pi x. Yes. Yes, can you sign the back paper, please? So now a n zero can be computed by taking the inner product. So a, a n zero will be inner product of one with sinus of n plus one half pi x. All right, and dividing by inner product of sinus of n plus one half pi x um, sinus of n plus one half pi x. Right? This is why we have to compute. Um, so, so first I have to compute the inner problem of 1 and sin of um, n plus 1 half. So what is this by definition? What is the, the, the linear product of two functions? Yes? Yes, can you sign back paper please? So this is the integral from 0 to 1 of 1, sine of n plus 1 half pi x, dx. So how can I compute this uh, guy? Yes? Uh, it should be negative one half plus n pi times cosine one half plus n pi x. Can you sign back paper of this? So the n times the root of sinus is cosinus, right? So you have cosinus of n plus one half pi x minus over n plus one half pi and then take the difference between zero and one. So the one will give you zero um, and the zero will give you um, one over n plus one half pi. All right, good. Right, so now to compute a n zero, you have to compute uh, 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 the inner product of one and sinus n pi plus uh, n plus one half pi x dividing by the inner product of sinus n plus one half pi x and sinus n plus one half pi x. The first one is the integral from zero to one of one times sinus dx. The anti derivative, uh, derivative of sinus is cosinus. So here I have cosinus and I have to evaluate zero and one. So this gives me one over n plus one half pi. Watch this. Now, I'm going to compute the second one, sinus of n plus 1 half pi x, sinus of n plus 1 half pi x. And so this is the integral from 0 to 1 of sinus of n plus 1 half pi x squared. Yes, how do I compute this guy? Yes? You can use the trig identity that sine of something squared is equal to one half times one minus the cosine of two times. Yes, can you sign the back paper? Yes. So here, I'm gonna use this formula. So sine of sine squared will be one minus cosine of two times n plus one half pi x over two dx. All right, um, so the first guy, um, so how can I compute this integral? Yes? Yes, and sign the back paper, please. So now I'm gonna split it into into from zero to one of one half dx minus one half the integral from zero to one of cosine of two uh, n plus one pi x dx. All right. So what is the value of the first integral? Can you sign back paper on this? How can I compute the second guy? Yes? 
can say the back of the paper, please. So the anti-derivative of cosinus is sinus. So you have 2m pi, uh, 2m plus 1 pi x divided by 2n plus 1 pi x. Don't forget the 1 half, and you have to evaluate, evaluate at 0 and 1. So what is the value of this quantity? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sign the back paper, please. So finally, this is one half, and the other one is this guy. So, so, um, so, so, a n at zero will be. 1 over n plus 1 half pi divided by 1 half and this is uh, uh, this is 2 times 1 over n plus 1 half pi so this is 4 over 2n plus 1 pi right so you divide the two things uh, you have 1 over n plus 1 half pi divided by 1 half divided by 1 half means that you multiply with 2 and so this gives you 4 over 2 n plus 1 pi now we plug everything back here and the solution will be utx is equal to the <coughs> sum of n is 1 over 1 to infinity of a n at 0 which is this guy 4 over 2 n plus 1 pi e to the power minus 2 n plus 1 half pi squared t sinus of n plus 1 half pi x all right which is it's clear right right so the only difference between this t equation and the other equation is the fact that you have to to do another uh, step to solve the first order differential equation in T, right? Any questions? Yeah. So if there's no questions, let us go to another more complicated equation, but the principle will be the same. So you you have still have a function u which is um, a function of t and x, but you have the second derivative of u is going to be the second derivative of x. X is again in in the interval a b t is from zero to infinity, right? So the boundary condition for u is the same c one u a u t a plus c two d x of u t a is zero c2 utb uh, c3 utb plus c4 dx of utb is zero and then you have what you have dt of u zero x is going to be one and dt t of u uh, to be uh, a function initial condition x Right? So for the, the difference between the wave equation and the heat equation is that the wave equation has a second derivative in Right? So this is the first difference. Right? So the first difference is that for the wave equation, you have a second derivative in time. While for the heat equation, you have only uh, uh, the first derivative in time of t. Um, and and there's still another difference. What is it? Yes. Right. 
So can you stand back the paper, please? So the initial condition, this is not the Mary condition, this is the initial condition. You have two initial conditions. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, no, so, sorry. So, so in this case, you have two initial conditions. The first one is u as zero, and the second one is dt of u as zero. So basically, this is the, the second Mary condition. The, there are two initial conditions. So do you know why we have two initial conditions? Yes? So now since uh, T is also taking its uh, <coughs> sense of zero, now you have to take the initial condition. Yes, can you say back paper, please? So here you have to have two initial conditions because the equation is second order in T, right? So first, the second uh, the equation is um, second order in X, which means that you have to have two boundary conditions. And here you have a second order the uh, 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 second order differential uh, second order derivative in T of u, so which means that you also need two um, condition uh, for for T, right? Right. So to solve this equation, you wanna do the same. You wanna do the same. So for this equation, we're gonna do the same. So you um, you solve the uh, 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 eigenvalue problem. In X, right? So yes. Will we also end up solving an eigenvalue problem for T? Uh, this is not an eigenvalue problem for T. All right. Um, but you're gonna, you're gonna solve a second order differential equation in T. Yeah. So in the previous case, for the heat equation, what you have is a first order differential equation in X, uh, in, in, in T. But because here you have a second uh, order, uh, uh, derivative in T, so you're gonna have a second order <coughs> differential equation in T. So first you have to solve the eigenvalue problem in X, so Pn second is lambda and Pn, phi is in A, B, <coughs> Then you have the same boundary condition. You have C1 Pn at A plus C2 3 prime n at A is 0. Um, C3 Pn at B plus C4 Pn prime at B is 0. All right? So after you find this, you're going to uh, you're gonna expand UTX on this basis. A-N-T, P-N-X. Right, and we have to find A-N-T. Right, so after this step, after this step, after finding the, 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 uh, the basis, Right? What you have to do is you expand u on this basis. So you have UTX will be the sum as going from 1 to infinity of A and T, P and T, uh, P and X. Right? Again, okay, so what is the second derivative of U T X? You have this series. How how can I take the second derivative? In T of this series, yes. And just do a and double prime. Yes, can you sign the back paper, please? So you're gonna do the same like in the previous case, right? You do a and double prime. In the previous case, you only need to do p and uh, a and prime, right? So how can I do the second derivative in X of this series? Yes? Well, we know the, the lambda phi. Not yet, not yet. I just want to take the second no, derivative. We can just say uh, phi double prime. Yes, can you say back by this? So you want to do the second derivative <laughs> in X of this guy, right? So what you do is you take the second derivative of phi n second, right? So this is going to be n somewhere n is going from 1 to infinity of a and t. 
PN second X. Now, what is what can I say about PN second X? Yes. Yes. Can you stand back click of this? So now you have what you have. Um, you're going to use this again. Uh, value problem, right? So you have a and t, lambda n, p and x. All right? All right? So I explain again. You take the second derivative in time of u of this series. In order to do that, you just have to do the second derivative in i, right? Now you have to take the second derivative in x of u. Um, so, so the first step is to take the second derivative in uh, in pn. And but the second derivative in pn is equal to lambda n pn because of this equation. So I replace pn second by lambda n pn. Now you have this t u t x is equal equal to the x x of u t x. This is the equation. So what can we say? Yes? And double prime is equal to an uh, times lambda. Yes. Can you send the back effect of this? So, so you have what? You have this series <coughs> is equal to this series, right? Which means that this box is equal to this box. You have an second is equal to lambda and an. And this is a second order <coughs> differential equation. How do you solve a second order differential equation? Um, you step on the this is for first order. Uh, mm, yes? Yeah, we just use the characteristic. Right. right. So this is again another characteristic. Uh, Method, right? So first you use characteristics to solve the eigenvalue problem because this is a second order differential equation. Now for this guy, again you're gonna use the same method, right? Uh, so characteristic equation. Um, so you have r squared is equal to lambda n. In general, in general, in most of the app, in most of the situation, lambda n is negative. In most of the case, lambda n is negative. Right. Uh, in most of the cases, uh, lambda n is negative. What can I say about the roots? Yes. <coughs> Can you send a back paper of this? So after you identify the coefficient, you found that um, a n um, second is equal to a n lambda n. Right? So this is the second order differential equation, and the method to solve a second order differential equation is the characteristic method, like here. Right? So, but if in most of the cases, lambda n is negative. Um, so in this case, you have two lambda one and two is going to be equal to plus or minus the i times absolute value of lambda n. Right? What can I say about a n? Yes? Uh, now we, uh, we say a n in this case would be uh, c1 cosine lambda, square of lambda, right. t and then cosine right. uh, plus t two times. Right, so a n t in this case, can you say back to this? Will be cosine C1 n cos cosine of square root lambda n t plus C2 n sine of square root lambda n t. Right, so this wave equation is more difficult because you have to do twice the characteristic method. Right? So I explain again. For the wave equation, the difference is that you have a second derivative in t. So when you have a second derivative in t, uh, you do the same thing. You find the eigenvalue, you solve the eigenvalue problem, and in the eigenvalue value problem, you have to use 
the method of characteristic, right? And then after you find lambda n phi n, you expand u as the sum of a n phi n. So the second derivative in time of u is going to be a n second phi n, and the second derivative in x of u is a n phi n second. But phi n second is lambda n phi n, <coughs> which means that a n second is lambda n a n, right? This is the second order differential equation. Uh, so again, you have to use the characteristic method, right? The characteristic method is the method that you so used to solve second order differential equation. So, so in most most of the case, when you do this computation, you know that lambda n is negative. When lambda n is negative, this equation has two root plus and minus i square root of lambda n. So a n has the form c one cosine square root of lambda n plus c two sine square root of lambda n, right? Questions? Right, so now this is a n, and I plug it back to the form of the equation, and I get the following. Uh, so you're going to have u t x will be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity a n t p n x. And this is the sum when n is known from 1 to infinity <coughs> of t1n cosine of square root lambda n t <coughs> plus c2 sine of square root lambda n t. And then p and x. So the difference between this case and the previous heat equation is that here, you have c1 and cosine square root nt and c2 and sine square root lambda nt, right? Questions? Right. So, so now what is not computed in this expression? Yes? Pn. Yeah. Pn is computed. Well, because it's the eigenfunction. Um, lambda. Lambda no, is computed, it's the eigenvalue. Yes? Yes, can you sign back a tape of this? So C1 and C2 are not computed. Right? Um, so how can I compute C1 and C2? C1 and C2 and <coughs> And a bank paper of this. So, uh, uh, so in order to compute C1 and C2, you're going to use this boundary condition, right? So you use that initial condition. This is I1, uh, I0 of x is I1x, right? Which means that uh, ux, 0x is also somewhere n is going from 1 to infinity of C1n. Cosine of so this is zero. So this is C1 and P n x. So let me uh, cosine of zero plus C2 n sine of zero P n x. So this is somewhere n is going from one to infinity of C1 n uh, P n x. Right? Which mean that I want X is equal to this one. Right? So this is the general form of the solution. You know that F0 and T is equal to zero. U zero X is I one X. Right? So I'm gonna replace T to be zero here. So U zero X is the sum when C uh, when N is zero from one to infinity of C one N cosine of zero, C two N sine of zero, P N is zero, right? Cosine of zero is one, and sine of zero is zero, which means that I I one x is going to be c one p n x. What is c one n? <coughs> How do you compute c one n in this case? Yes. The inner product of i one of x and p n of x divided by the inner product of p n of x. Yes. Can you say the this? So c one of c one n will be inner product of i one p n divided by p n p n. 
Questions? Right, so, so now I compute C1. How can I compute C2? C2N. Yes? Same way, but using the other instrument. Yes, can you sign up by the paper, please? So we're going to use the other initial condition, right? Um, so I'm going to have to use the other uh, initial condition. I have to take the derivative in time and use the x first. So I have this series. So what is the derivative in time of u? Yes? Uh, it'll be that series times square root of the absolute value of lambda. Mm -hmm. I have a series, well, which is this guy. Up, do the, again, I'm sick, so I'm not thinking clearly. It is in being C1 and square root lambda sine, right. or negative uh, sine lambda and t plus right. uh, C2 and square root lambda. Right, can you sign the microphone for this? So to take the derivative in time of this series, I just have to take the derivative in time of, of the cosine of the sinus, right? So this is C1 and cosine of square root lambda and t. So the goal is to use the second boundary condition, this one here, right? Um, to use this boundary condition, I have to compute the real CV times this series. Uh, so in order to compute the derivative in time this series, I have to compute the derivative in time of cosine and sinus. So this gives me somewhere in C1 from 1 to infinity of C1n minus square root of lambda n sinus of square root of lambda n t c two n square root of lambda n cosine of square root of lambda n t five n zero. Right. So this is dt of u. So what I do is I just take the derivative of everything that has t. Uh, now I'm gonna use this condition, right? So you have dt of u. And zero x is going to be i two of x, right? So i two of x will be. So this is the second initial condition that I have. So I have i two of x is going to be the derivative in time of u zero x, which is equal to what is it? So I use the second boundary condition, right? Uh, initial condition, right? So right two y two of x is dt in u of 0x, what is, yes? Uh, C2n square root of lambda n uh, times phi n. Right. So when I replace <coughs> 0 here, it's going to be 0. I got, when I replace 0 here, it's going to be 1. So this is going to be a sign when n is going to be 1 to infinity of C2 square root of lambda n times 0, uh, times 1, so this is phi n x. Right? So I have i2x is equal to the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of c2 square root of lambda n p and x. So what is c2 square root of lambda n? Yes? So the inner product of i2 and px over px2? Yes, can you say the back please? So you have c2n square root of lambda n is going to be the inner product of i2 p n over p n p n. So C2n will be 1 over square root of lambda n and 2 pn over pn pn. Right? Questions? It's clear. Right? So I explain again. Um, so the idea is first you have to find the basis twice, and for t, you want to solve another equation. Right? So first you project u onto this basis phi and x. So u depends on t, which means that the coefficient a and t also depend on t. Right? Um, so
So when you project it onto these spaces, you're gonna obtain a second um, order, a, a, a second order differential equation for a n. When you solve it, you get c one and cosine square root of lambda n t plus c two sine square root of lambda n t p n, right? Uh, but c one and c two and they are not computed. So how do you compute that? You're gonna use the two initial conditions, like in the previous uh, case of heat equation, you have u zero x is uh, i one x, right? You replace zero here, so here I have cosine of zero, sine of zero. So this go, this guy goes away. So finally, I have i one x is somewhere and it's going from one to infinity of c one n p n x, right? Because of the orthogonality, um, c one n will be in the of i one and p n divided by p n p n. Right now, I'm gonna have to. So this is the 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 the, uh, the role of the first initial condition. The role of the first initial condition is to compute c one n. The role of the second initial condition is to compute c two n. Right. So to compute c two n, I just have to take the derivative in time of u, which is computed by computing the uh, the terms that have t in the series. So here I have cosinus and sinus, so when I take the derivative in time, I have minus C1n square root of lambda n sinus uh, square root of lambda n t plus C2 square root of lambda n cosinus uh, square root of lambda n t. I have log zero here, I have I2x is equal to the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of C2 square root of lambda n pn, so C2n square root of lambda n is going to be um, I2 pn over pn pn. Questions? <coughs> There's one thing that I didn't check, but I'm sure that this is correct. What is it? First, this is solved, right? So this becomes a, a, a second order differential equation of AN. So this is U. So this is used to compute C1N. This is used to compute C2N. So what did I, uh, what didn't I check? Yes? The boundary condition. Yes. Uh, so I need to check that this boundary condition is satisfying as well. But I said that, okay, because I choose, uh, uh, I choose PN to satisfy that uh, um, eigenvalue problem. The two boundary conditions here are satisfying. Why? Yes? Because they were used to find the lambda n and pn. Yes? Here's the back paper, please. So let us check the first. Uh, so, so because for pn, you also have pn of i plus 2 uh, pn prime a0, right? So this is uh, the eigen, uh, uh, so this is the condition of the eigen. Uh, 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 function uh, eigenvalue problem, right? Um, so, so this is so when I, I plug C one u at i plus C two um, v x of u at t i, what do I get? I have this series. I want to compute C one u t i plus C2, the angst of UTA. What is it? Zero. Why? Because uh, that's the boundary conditions were for U or TA. Uh, we are trying to check. Oh. But I said that this is zero. But why is it zero? You know that this is zero, right? Because when you compute this, what do you get? When you compute this, what you get is a n t prime p n at a plus some n n is going from one to infinity p n prime at a. That's c one c two, right? And this gives you some n is going from one to infinity. 
two minutes, right? So A and T, C1, P and A, plus C2, P and prime with A, and this is zero, right? So we know that from the eigenvalue problem that we solve, the boundary condition is C1, P and A, <coughs> plus C2, P and prime with A, zero. Now let us check this boundary condition. This boundary condition can be computed by taking C1 times this sum A and T, P and A, and then C2, A and T, P and prime and A, right? Because this is the X of U, so I take the derivative and I put X to be A, right? So here I have A and, I have A and, so I can group A and A and, so I have A and T, C1, P and A, plus C2, P prime, and uh, three n prime at a, so this is zero because of the boundary condition of the eigenvalue problem, <coughs> uh, which means that finally what you get is zero. Okay. So this boundary condition is satisfied, and similarly this boundary condition is also satisfied. Right, so we can meet again on Thursday. Thank you.